Thank you. I think you guys can work a lot uh, very well together, but also the things you can learn from her. Lisa Leslie has been one of my idols ever since I was younger. Obviously, watching the, the USA teams growing up and you know watching her win championships with Los Angeles. I've never had the opportunity to play alongside her yet um, as a result of her pregnancy and her not being able to come on the USA trips. But um, I'm really looking forward to it. Obviously, she's a great role model, and you know I'm just looking to take in whatever she tells me. Hi, uh, Catherine Smith from the Tampa Tribune. Oh. Uh, Candace, nice can you talk about how you've balanced these last couple of months when you first made your announcement that you were going to come out early? And, you know, battling through the shoulder injury, you know, competing for a national championship, just how you balanced all of that? It's been really hard. Um, obviously, I've wavered. I think everybody wavers on decisions all the time, especially when you're in the moment and there's orange surrounding you and people are begging you and telling you one more year. But um, I gave my word and I just felt like it was, it was time for me to leave and, and we left on top. So I feel like just um, living in the moment is how I've, you know, been able to balance everything and stay, stay with my head above water because it's been, it's been a tough couple hours. I want to apologize to my family because I've been kind of stressed. <laughs> so, Candace, when uh, Maria Cornelius, Rocky Top News, when Los Angeles took you, you look almost relieved. Was there any kind of doubt that they were going to take you? You just look almost a little bit surprised. Anything nowadays does not surprise me. So I was just like, okay, I'm not going to believe that I'm an L.A. Spark until they say my name. And when she said my name, you know, first she said Candace, and I was like, okay, it's not because there's Candace Wiggins. So I was like, okay, it's not clear yet. So then I heard Parker, and I was just, you know, really, really, really excited about it. Candace, uh, Dick Patrick, USA Today. Do you have a game plan uh, for uh, monitoring your shoulder and rehabbing that? Well, I feel like, um, you know, I'm going to get in with the LA Sparks medical staff and they're going to evaluate and I'm sure there'll be some communication between Jenny Moshak and them uh, about my shoulder. But, you know, I'm just going into it with an open mind. Obviously, I'm going to do whatever I can in my power to rehab my shoulder. I think right now it just needs rest, and we'll go from there. Hey, Candace, uh, Jacques, do you say with uh, WAFP TV, can you just talk about the irony about how it just always seems like it's, it's you and Sylvia Fowles, one and two, for, for everything you compete at? Sylvia is a great player. We've been playing against one another ever since high school, and she's gotten better every year. I think that's what's so special about her is every year she's consistently you know, raised her game, and I just have enjoyed competing against her and will so in the WNBA. Candace, Mike Oregon from the Tennessee, and can you talk about how much more attention has been paid to this draft and how it seems that incrementally the, the game is catching up to the men's game? You know, I dreamed as a kid to come to the WNBA draft. And it was weird because my fiance Sheldon whispered over to me, you know, you dreamed of this. This is what you've wanted, you know, your entire life. And, you know, I just, I really just sat there and you're like, I'm like, you're right. And the game hasn't arrived. I don't think the game will ever arrive because we're, we're constantly trying to grow the game. But I think every little bit helps. And I feel like now it's our class's responsibility to, you know, raise the bar. And, and I think that this class is capable of doing that. I mean, we raised the bar in college drastically and I feel like in the WNBA it's going to be the rivalries it's going to be the Candace Wiggins versus Candace Parker it's going to be the Sylvia Fowles versus Erlena Larkins so I, I feel like it's going to be you know it's going to be great for the game uh, we do have a few more questions let me just interject for one second that Candace's teammate Alexis Hornbuckle was taken with the fourth pick by the Detroit Shock oh great wow Hi, Candace. Congratulations. Tara Paul and SPM Sports Page. Um, what, what's up for the next few weeks for you? And, and have you spoken to a Coach Cooper? And have you ever been to LA? I have been to LA. I've um, been there a couple times for the ESPYs. And then also, we went and played UCLA this year. I have not spoke to Coach Cooper. Um, but my teammate, Sydney Spencer, you know, I, I, she'll, she'll help me out and getting settled and things like that. 
you know, we were teammates in Tennessee, so she's got my back. Yeah, Candace, I wonder you you played for Pat Summit. You know Michael Cooper's a former NBA player, has won, you know, national championships, league championships. Can you talk about playing for a former NBA player and how you think that's going to, in some ways, positively affect your game? I, I was really excited um, when he came back to the WNBA. Um, obviously, I think he's great for the game. I think he knows a lot about it, brings knowledge, brings experience. Obviously, he's experienced in winning. And I, actually, I was reading, you know, because I keep up with the WNBA, I have always have, and they hired Mr. Mean for an assistant coach. So I was excited about that, rebounding and all that stuff. So I'm really excited about <laughs> all that. So. Candace, you arrived here with Alexis and Nikki. How special is it to not only be drafted, but to be going through this day with two teammates? It, it couldn't have been any better. It couldn't have been any better. Um, I think we were just riding over in the car and realizing, you know, that was the last time that we were going to play with one another and things like that. But also that we're opening up a new chapter in our lives. And, you know, we were talking on the way over here about, you know, when their team comes to town, us going to dinner and always keeping in touch and, you know, just down the line. And we all have another excuse to go back to Knoxville now because we got to raise another banner. So we just had those conversations. And, you know, it's going to be, we're going to be friends for life. Brad Engel, Naperville Sun, congratulations. Thank you. What are your obligations uh, left to Tennessee, if any? Well, I feel like I haven't given Tennessee half as much as Tennessee's given me. So I, I feel like I'm always going to give back no matter how long I'm graduated from Tennessee. Obviously, um, I have to go back and finish class. You know, uh, I have a Monday night class that I have to finish. So um, that and then obviously graduation. I really would love to be able to be a part of that. Candace, thank you very much. Thank you. Three hours. Three hours. You know exactly I'm going how on three. three, yes. Talk about this day for you in the last 24 hours, and, and did you ever dream of this type of emotion? I haven't ever dreamed of these last two days being this exciting. Obviously, to finish up college on top, mm -hmm. and then to go do all the festivities that come with winning a national championship, and then to get up at 8 o'clock this morning and go to the national championship trophy presentation, and then to come here supporting me, you know, obviously tolerating my stress because I've been stressed the last couple of hours, but I'm excited. I'm just going to enjoy it now. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do the rest of the afternoon? When do you head to Knoxville? Kind of give me the next round where you're traveling today. I have no idea. I don't even know what I'm doing in the next hour, so we'll see. See how it goes. I'm just really excited to be here. I understand. I heard in the press conference you have a class to finish up. What class is that? Is that even it's on your my, mind? It's my sports ethics class. Sports Monday ethics. night. Tell the teacher to give me a good grade. Have some <laughs> mercy will. on me, please. <laughs> what please. do you learn in sports ethics? Sports ethics you have to find big finals coming up. Just yes, about everything. We write papers, do debates. So that's how it is. Grad school class. So. Is this a dream come true for you? This is a dream come, come true. Uh, I've dreamed of this ever since I was younger, and I'm just happy that you know, I had the opportunity to experience this. I know a lot of women before me paved the way for, for me to be here, and I just am really appreciative. Thank you. Thank you. How bittersweet is it to be leaving Tennessee? I mean, I know this is exciting, but how, how bittersweet is it for you? I think it was just difficult for me to realize that all good things must come to an end. You know, I wavered a little bit on my decision and wanting to come back, but I feel like I've made the right decision in leaving. and. I feel like it's just it's the right it's the right step to take. I mean, going out as a champion, you can't you can't ask for anything better.